Today we got a three pack of news for all of you guys. Um, some major stuff happening by Nintendo. They have a major acquisition. Um, we call it an acquisition. It's more so a partnership, but it does involve quite a bit of money. Uh, and Nintendo trying to expand the massive high quality games that are on Nintendo Switch and Nintendo platforms moving forward. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, we also have um, some updates on potentially when the Nintendo Direct is going to happen. Newsflash, uh, we are now putting uh, a certain leaker on the shit list today, but we'll talk about that later. And then uh, we also have a, another story that's happening, maybe as you're listening to this video, that we're going to discuss further on tonight's Nintendo Prime podcast. Uh, but before we get into that, there's two things I want to mention. One, this video is brought to you by us, by Nintendo Prime. Uh, we have launched brand new merchandise uh, for you guys to look at. We have um, sweatshirts. Uh, we have zip hoodies like this one, although it's not this one. This is actually an old school classic one you can't buy anymore. Um, and we have uh, like a XXL desk mats and stuff like that, you know. Uh, so yeah, there's a there's a, a number of things. I think a mug as well, uh, featuring a brand new design. So we'll put a link down in the description for anyone who uh, wants to check that out. You don't have to, but I would appreciate it. Um, so yeah, beyond all that, we're also giving away a Nintendo Switch OLED. That's right, the white Switch OLED. We're giving one away. All you have to do is be subscribed to the channel to enter. That's it. Um, we will be announcing the winner during a live stream in early October. All right, so the lead story today, our biggest story, arguably, uh, is that Forever in Entertainment has been sort of acquired by Nintendo, uh, Forever Entertainment put out a series of tweets, but they didn't really, it's not really that Nintendo owns them, but Nintendo has kind of partnered with them to form a new subsidiary that is 100% owned by Forever Entertainment that's exclusively working with Nintendo. So it's sort of like an acquisition, kind of. Uh, Forever Entertainment, by the way, um, you might have heard of. They have done things like the Legend of Dragoon port to the Nintendo Switch. They're working uh, with Square Enix on future games coming to Switch as well. So they have actually been a uh, lead studio, you know, like Panic Button and others, that have been porting games to Switch. Um, so Nintendo didn't actually buy Forever Entertainment, but they did enter into a major agreement um, on one of their subsidiaries, Forever Seed Fund, which Forever Seed Fund didn't even exist till April of this year and has done nothing as far as we're aware. However, obviously that was in the midst of contractual negotiations that have now concluded, hence the public announcement. Uh, Forever Seed is a brand new branch, uh, and Nintendo will be using Forever Seed Fund to research high-quality games being made in Eastern Europe. This includes Poland, and they mentioned Poland specifically, not, in, not, not exclusively Eastern Europe. It could be all of Europe, but the focus is on Eastern Europe and Poland, which is really interesting when you consider Poland, because um, from Poland, we have gotten some really, really interesting games. Uh, Dying Light, Bulletstorm, Cyberpunk 2077, and Outriders are all created in Poland, which I find to be really interesting. Some of these studios, you know, like Dying Light has a version of their uh, first game coming to Switch later this month. Uh, we've had Witcher 3 in the past. Some of these companies have worked with Nintendo, but the initiative is trying to essentially um, task this company to find high quality games being made by third parties or whatever in Eastern Europe and Poland and essentially convince them to bring those games to Nintendo Switch through whatever means, whether it's monetary compensation, whether it's providing Forever Entertainment as a porting studio. Uh, Nintendo does have Nintendo of Europe, but Nintendo of Europe actually has a very poor uh, situation for talking to third party companies about bringing games to Nintendo. They've been very poor at this for a long time. Um, they're more so just a marketing arm for Nintendo in Europe. They're not really a um, seeking new partners kind of uh, setup. So, and obviously with uh, you know, Nintendo of Europe managing a whole bunch of different countries marketing, uh, Nintendo wanted to take the um, ability to work with other companies to a studio that can dedicate themselves to doing that, hence Forever Entertainment Fund. Um, obviously it being a fund it suggests that Nintendo is willing to monetarily compensate and even fund games. They could be looking into exclusive games coming to Switch in the future from um, try trying to catch that next big uh, developer that's just sitting out there 
there and has a, a massive project in the works, but they just can't get the funding for it, Nintendo could step up there. Hence, things like Bayonetta 2 and Bayonetta 3 that we've seen out of Platinum Games, Astral Chain, etc. They have a very good partnership with, with, with uh, funding games from that studio. Nintendo could be looking for more European studios to do that with. Also, it does appear that Nintendo is trying to get this studio to convince some of the major third parties, like CD Projekt Red, to bring future games. If not current ones, future games to Nintendo Switch by providing development resources and monetary compensation to consider Switch platforms moving forward. This is actually a massive move by Nintendo that isn't going to probably see payouts from it for you know two to three years, which could be the end of the Switch lifecycle going into the next generation platform from Nintendo if there is one and they don't just decide to keep iterating and releasing more powerful Switches over time and just keep this a forever kind of thing like iPhone is. Still, um, I do think that this is a very interesting twist of fate uh, that Nintendo is engaging in because they clearly are trying to expand the gaming repertoire on Switch, not just be so reliant on their own titles and a select few third-party games. They want to see things like the next new IP that CD Projekt Red makes. They would like to probably see that on Switch, but they're not going to consider Switch outright while they're developing unless Nintendo's throwing hundreds of millions of dollars at them and also giving development resources. So I think that's kind of the uh, goal here is to get those games over Plus, obviously, some independent developers that might have some really neat ideas but need funding. Hence, you know, remember, we, they, they funded Golf Story and Sports Story, which we haven't had an update on in a while. So, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what comes of this. But clearly, Nintendo is trying to get more major, high-quality European developers bringing their biggest games to Switch and, obviously, future Nintendo platforms. This is nothing but a good investment, I think, for Nintendo. But we'll have to see what comes of it. So obviously we've been talking about the Nintendo Direct for a couple of weeks, and if you guys remember, uh, remember the other day, it might have even been yesterday, I can't remember what, it was yesterday or the day before, we, we talked about Zippo, and Zippo saying that uh, there is going to be a Nintendo Direct imminently, likely this week. Uh, and yeah, he appears to be wrong. We are on Wednesday. Nintendo does usually give us a full day heads up before Nintendo Direct happens, and it has not been announced at the time of publication of this video, or at least at the time of recording of this video. Uh, so yeah, Zippo has actually been wrong quite a bit the last year, so I think we have now reached a point where there's been enough incorrect. I gave him the benefit of the doubt because he got some Sonic information correct this year, but I think we've reached a point that he's gotten enough wrong about Nintendo specifically that we could just kind of add him to the shit list and he's got quite a bit of work to come back. It's not like Samus Hunter, who got a couple things wrong at E3, but has had a bunch of stuff right since then. This guy is just hasn't been right about Nintendo in a long time. He put all his eggs, obviously, in what I feel is a guess that the Direct would happen this week, because the prior two Directs happened in the first week of September. But it is what it is. We do have an interesting development, though, on when the Direct might be happening. So the Monolith Soft official website uh, has posted that they will be doing a maintenance update next week. If you guys remember, there's a major game rumored to be coming from Monolith Soft in Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Uh, and that potentially could be at a Direct. I'm not sure if it will be, but it is a possible game to be talked about at this Direct, just like Donkey Kong and the rest of the rumored games out there. The thing about this, though, is that it is scheduled to happen on the 8th in Japan at 5 p.m. JST, or 5 JST, uh, and the thing is, that's about 3 p.m. on the 7th here in the U.S. Now, Nintendo usually does directs early in the morning. The 7th would be a Tuesday. They could obviously do the direct then, then update the website later that day. It's also possible this maintenance could last for several days, and then obviously have a direct on that Thursday. It's really interesting to see how Nintendo's going to line this up if it is next week. This maintenance, by the way, could have literally nothing to do with a direct it could just be routine um, but there have been times in the past where official websites from nintendo have gone under maintenance right as a direct was about to happen or did happen uh, and then obviously that's because they're updating the website um, with all the new game information so i will have to wait and see if that bears any fruit um, what is interesting is that Marco Maro, yes, another one of those randos on the internet, but he's actually been right on a lot of Nintendo Direct dates uh, over the last three years, believe it or not. He's actually been really accurate. I, I, I went back on all of his posts, and it, it, it's around 85% accuracy on Direct dates or Direct-related dates like the Mario Anniversary stuff. And what he threw out there is that, um, yeah, we should expect this on the 8th. So he's saying on the 8th, which... I know it sounds weird. Tuesday and Thursday are our traditional Nintendo Direct days. The 8th is a Wednesday. Now, Marco Maro didn't clarify whether it was 8th Japan time or 8th US. Uh, either way, uh, that's around the time that he is saying it's going to happen. Uh, so just kind of another one of those leakers putting a feather on the cap who actually has a pretty accurate track record. And if not telling us when the date is going to be, 
predicting it and seemingly being right most of the time. Um, one final note for today's video. Uh, there is a reveal of a game uh, happening probably as you're watching this video. Um, maybe it already happened. <laughs> it depends on how quickly I get this edited and up. Um, Marvel's Midnight Suns, which was unveiled at Gamescom last week and was surprisingly announced as coming to Nintendo Switch along with PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. I, that, that really did shock some people. It's supposed to be an XCOM-style game. It's actually being made by the old XCOM team. In fact, the lead director on it is actually one of the people that founded the XCOM series. So, obviously going to be heavily inspired by that. If you, if you guys don't have any experience with XCOM, think Mario plus Rabbids, you know, but like more military, sci-fi-ish. Uh, that is what XCOM is. Uh, but yeah, it, it, Fire Emblem, etc. These kind of, you know, RPG tactical strategy kind of games. Uh, that, that seems to be what this is going to be. Uh, and yeah, its gameplay reveal is today. Um, it actually happens, I think, in like 40 minutes or so uh, after the time of recording, although it's probably already happening as you're watching this. Uh, I might make a separate video on it later today if I'm super, super impressed and just really want to get something out about it right away, or if there's obviously another major story I can pair with it. However, if not, don't worry, we're still going to be talking about that gameplay today because uh, we have the Nintendo Prime podcast tonight at 8 p.m. Central Time. I'm actually going to get that stream set up fairly soon. I have to work on a new streaming setup with a new computer because all my stuff from Streamlabs OBS didn't pour it over. So I either have to rebuild it in Streamlabs or finally make the full switch over to Stream Elements, which is something I'm trying to do to offload some stuff. I don't know. Anyways, we'll get more into that later. Uh, what I just wanted to note is that we do have that podcast tonight at 8 p.m. Central Time. Um, it'll be about an hour and a half uh, long, and we'll be obviously talking about this gameplay especially if it's impressive but we'll probably bring it up either way along with a number of things like um nintendo direct predictions and you know wh whatever else i decide to throw in there the topics are an ever-evolving thing throughout the day on the day of a direct um so thank you guys for tuning in i am nintendo RoboJets from nintendo prime i know a lot of a lot of chit chattiness this time not a lot of woo, a lot of energy a lot of hype I, you know i can't bring it every single video but i try um, moving forward, we might be doing a little bit more entertaining um, segments in the future. Uh, I got some some, some planned little pop-offs and firing and a whole bunch of, uh, of cool stuff. I'm just still getting things set up on the new computer, which for some reason I put, again, Windows 11 on for no real reason other than just to try it out. And actually, I'm kind of happy with it, but whatever. I'm Nathaniel Robojance. You guys are watching Nintendo Prime. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.